Hey, what's up, one woman knows in the Ninja Warrior podcast? Woo! Yeah, tonight was the way we are so hyped today is because today we are finally announcing the Stage 5 Ninja Awards. Two weeks ago, we announced them for you guys and we took a week off just because, well, we didn't really feel like recording that, that Saturday. We decided, no, we don't really need to really put it off. We don't really need to have anything ready, ready. So, what, what, we could just wait another week. So, today we are doing it. Today we feel good about it. Today we are going to be announcing the State Tribe Ninja Awards. And if you guys are wondering, next week we will be covering the women's competition. So, don't worry, we will cover that. We'll cover that next week right before Ninja starts the week after, actually. But just so you guys know about that and what's going on with it. But that's not today's business. Today's business is the Stage 5 Ninja Awards. Two weeks ago, we announced them, basically. A whole bunch of different categories, a whole bunch of nominees. The three of us have talked it over, and we have decided the nominees, the winners of each nominee. We're going to explain why certain people won and why certain other people who might have deserved the spot. I could have got one. Why they didn't, obviously, so... Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know about you guys, but I think I just want to get started. Probably the most like, exciting podcast of the year, you know? Yeah, it's, today is the big one, but we'll see. Alright, so the very first category we covered was the breakout male performance. Just for male rookies who did really well this season, and we um, just basically nominated the few based off either statistics or if we enjoyed their story. Speaking of statistics, that's why Ryan Lashoff was nominated. 
But he didn't win this category for obvious reasons. Yeah, I don't even think anyone really knew who he was, but we put him there because of statistic reasons. Yes, that was the main reason why Ryan Lashoff was in there. But also, with everyone else here, we had Joshua Lewis and Will Slagado, both on Joe Milwaukee's team. Will Slagado, I put him there mostly because I enjoyed his story as well as how far he went. But personally, wait, I don't think he would have deserved the win. Well, I really like Will Slagado's story. I don't personally think he deserves to win the category. There was also Joshua Lewis mentioned earlier. Joshua Lewis did really well. He was he, he was the only one. He was one of the only two rookies to make it to the finals. I think the difference is that he needed the power tower to make it to the semis. But you know, he still did really well this season. I think kind of is. I kind of sucks that he was barely shown, but that's how it rolls. That's how it rolls, basically. Anyway, bye. And then we have Nate Hansen, who I propose as our one up for this category. Yes, very much so. Nate Hansen had a really interesting story about being only five feet tall, but still finished the course. And while he didn't do all that well in the semis, I still say he deserves a nomination in the one half spot. Most certainly. And after that, we have the winner of this category. Emil Malik. I think this was really obvious just going into it because Emil did really well. I mean, all the way to the Power Tower playoffs. He even beat Jake Murray earlier. I mean, I don't think anyone else would have topped that kind of performance, even if it was by slim chance. Very much so. I mean, I was, I was angry about that, but it's not like I can change any of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not like we can just go in there, wave a magic wand, and there. He failed in qualifying the first obstacle. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Can we? <laughs> I mean, in also reality, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay, so next category was breakout female performance for female rookies. Went really far. Our nominees were Taylor Johnson, Ashley McConaughey, Maddie Howard, Sandy Zimmerman, and Joey, Joey DeRilio. Now, what are, none of these people were rookies, but they're mighty experienced because there weren't really all that many f actually female rookies that did really well. I think the only one, the only actual female rookie that did really well was um one of one of them. I believe one of Kid Awadi's teammates, because she made it the fifth obstacle as a rookie, but she never actually moved on, and <laughs> as she moved on. But anyway, wait, let's talk about these nominees. First up, uh, I want to mention Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson, personally, I kind of wish she was featured more. I understand why she was part of Drew's squad and everything, and I feel like that's why they never showed her, because... Uh, her so maybe they intended to, but because of the Drew thing, she never was. So her story was shoved down, and she was just fast forwarded. And that would have been okay if they actually bothered, you know, not show Drew. Yeah, and that you know just seamlessly try to hide him, even though he was easily visible. Very easily. I mean, it, it, she was he was spotted in both her fast forwards in the semifinals and and qualifiers. So when you can easily just do that, then I don't think you guys did a good job. No, you're not, if that was the case. Alright, so, anyway. After that, we have Maddie Howard, who completed the course, but fell in the blunt rubble in the semis. She had a COVID story, obviously, and I think it was a lot better than um, Jordy Vio's wife, who I don't remember the name of. But, either way, I think it was way better than us, because, well, it was shorter, yes, but it also... I feel like it made you feel a little more for the doctors, and they tried less hardly to milk it. I mean, it might have been because they had already milked it in episode one, but in the here and now, they weren't milking it anymore. Thankfully. Thankfully, they were not. Because, like, I was less stressful during Maddie Howard's story than I was during Jordy Vio's life. I personally was... I was really entitled to Jordy Vio's wife by the time her story was over. But Maddie Howard, I was okay with. Yeah, I see your point there. Um, that was one. Sandy Zimmerman. She was the was the only woman in this cat way all the way to the finals. And personally, I think. And personally, I think she did really well. And honestly, I think she deserves a one-up spot. Oh yeah, definitely. She 
Well, she never hit a buzzer. She did really well. She made all the cooks school in the semis. She just really well. Yeah, she did better than many of the other women here. Like, she got second place overall. So, very, it was really impressive. But honestly, I felt like she didn't deserve this as much as the actual winner itself. But I say, no, good job for Sandy. After that, we have Joey Delirio. Joey Delirio, well, she really only made it because of her Rachel Goldstein's, um, was it injury? We in the semis. She still, I'm still, oh, felt obligated to pop her in here, despite the fact that she would not have done as well if, um, which of course didn't get injured, but, you know, that was that. Yeah, even though she got like a, I guess a wild card place, really, still, it was a really impressive one. Eventually, she made all the way to the um, finals. That's why I'm not being like one of the mo one of the best women competitors, but she has really shown off her skills in recent years. Yeah, definitely. From what we've seen from her from previous seasons in this one, she definitely has a quite bright future. I'd say if she can make it to Vegas next season, she has a pretty good shot for ways to make it to the wolf wall. Yeah, we'll see. I wouldn't be so, I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be too sure about the wolf wall, but definitely make it the first for the actually qualify for Vegas. Like actually. Uh, no, she has done it twice, technically, but, you know, she's had, she's only had to go to the fifth obstacle in order to do so both times, so, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, just having her, um, actually qualify there, as they can make it to, like, the eighth or ninth obstacle. I'm not sure if she'll make it to the ninth obstacle, but, yeah, I see what you mean there. And the winner of this category, no surprise, is Ashley McConaughey. Um, technically, she's not a rookie, as none of these women are, but we thought she was, and, well, I still feel like she deserves a spot. She completed the course was as a rookie. Uh, rookie is practically a rookie. And she never... And then this was her first time being featured on the show. And she had a really nice story with her um, uncle who had, like, um, down, um, down syndrome. Um, so, <laughs> it was really the top pick and the one that stuck out. But, once again, Stanley Zimmerman... Honorable mention because of her story and her how well she did. It was really hard for us to pick between Ashley McConaughey and Sandy Zimmerman, but we went with Ashley more because she left more of an impact on us as a whole. Or in addition, I wanted her to succeed a little more than Sandy. But once again, you know, you never know how things would go. And uh, yeah. Anyway, right, let's move on to the next category. Best new obstacle. Oh man, we're getting juicy with this one. Heck yes. Best new obstacle. The nominees were Corkscrew, Clockwork, Burnt Rubber, Dragonback, and Falling Shelves. Uh, so, Clockwork didn't make it simply because, well, it was, well, it was original, yes. I really didn't um, particularly stick it out in my mind, but I knew it was a new obstacle, that's why I put it in there. There was Burnt Rubble, which personally I'd say would be one or up if it wasn't for a couple of these other picks here. Yeah, if, if the if the other two we haven't said yet weren't here, then yes, Burnt Rubble would probably be the one or up. Because I do like the obstacles concept, but it took out a lot of people. But, you know, the next two definitely would have placed higher. So we have the next two, we have Dragon Back, which is my personal you know, favorite in terms of looks and aesthetics. Now, obviously, that's not the one I picked because I'm mentioning it here, but I personally like it, get because of that, and that's why I'm giving it its water up spot. Yeah, second place. I was kind of shocked you didn't pick Fallen Shelves. I mean, I personally thought Fallen Shelves was really unoriginal, being perfectly honest. But Dragon Back, it's very similar to the Stair Hopper from previous seasons. It has a really cool look with the dragon and stuff. And it took out a lot of ninjas. It was a very unexpected obstacle. I don't think I ever expected something like that to ever be featured in Ninja. Almost certainly not. I mean, that thing stuck out like a ball. That thing stuck out. <laughs> that thing really did stick out. There was nothing really else like it on the, on the course. No, it had completely different colors. It was a completely different type of obstacle. I really, I think something like that does belong to the end of the city finals course, and I would love to see it return in a, in season thirteen of AEW in a couple of weeks from now. Oh yeah, definitely. That's gonna be so exciting. Yeah, I would be so happy to see it return. Maybe it's the upper body obstacle and he changes thing. But anyway, let's move on 
move on to the actual to the actual winner, Corkscrew. Yeah, this was mostly a combination of all, all of us agreeing on it, but you know, it came down to like, um, which one looked more fun to be on, and which one we actually liked overall. And while David might have liked Dragon back a lot, it was still a tough pick, and. Uh, I personally like Cox School a lot more than that. Yeah, it's very wacky. It's so twisty for Tony. And it, you can have a wild ride on that thing. Like, truly, you can have a really wild ride. Very wild. And I think the creator, the creator of the Oscar knew, knew that. Um, I believe um, Jared or Josh. I believe he knew that. So I believe they transformed his idea into a very functional and a very fun obstacle that took out a lot of people. And was really enjoyable just to see the ninjas fly on. Yeah, definitely. Then we have the next category, which was the Ninja Killer of the Year. Yes, this category went to the obstacle that so, to, went to one of the obstacles took out some of the most ninjas. Like, a big knockout view of ninjas who were taken out by it. So, let's go to the nominees. They were Corkscrew once again, Falling Shell, Slingshot. The dungeon and finally the Ferris wheel. We also had an honorable mention for Dragon back here. Um. Oh. So something I was reminded of. Uh, at later on, after we had posted the thing, was the lunatic ledges. Yes, the lunatic ledges actually took out a lot more people than we thought. <laughs> yes, in episodes two and three, they took out a lot of the rookies, a lot of the veterans, and I completely forgot about the obstacle personally. So. Sorry about that. I just thought I deserved to mention why it wasn't on here. So, this is mostly considering the obstacles we had already nominated in the first place. Just something, everything seems fair, but we wanted to make a mention of the Logic Legends because someone had talked, um, t tipped us about it and asked why it wasn't in here, even though I personally think, now that I am recalling it and I'm actually remembering it, yes, it does deserve to be on there, but because it wasn't originally nominated, you know. And I don't think it would really make sense to put it on there anyway. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. Anyway, let's talk about the nominees we already have. So, first off, let's start off with the dungeon. Um, personally, this was a pretty cool obstacle, only really in naming sake. And it took out a, a good chunk of people. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think 17 people? Yeah, at least. I'm pretty sure. And it was the cutoff point for getting into the finals. So... Overall, it was a pretty tough obstacle. Only about five people made past it. Overall, like there weren't all that many. No, which is what which is why I was on here. Um, we also had the Ferris wheel, which um, we only personally put here just because well, it took out quite a few people. But honestly, looking back on that, I think those two guys just could have easily have went there instead. Yeah, but once again, I wasn't thinking of it when when um doing the nominations. Um, so, that was that. But, on um, the first one, it was still a really tough obstacle. I can't say it doesn't deserve it. It still took out a good chunk of people. No, I'm not denying that, but, you know. Yeah, there are more obstacles that weren't deserving to be a more, but, anyway, let's move on. Then we've got Slingshot from the eight, from the qualifiers and the second episode of the finals. Yeah, this is my personal favorite obstacle. Like, out of last, out of, out of any new year 11's roster, this took the cake for me in terms of best new obstacle. Really? I'm shocked. Yes, I, th I definitely think it's better than a lot of the others. And here, it took out a lot of people. And I personally think that it is the toughest obstacle we got. Um, aside from um, Dragon Back. Okay, I, I can. Get, I guess I can see your point there. Well, think about it. So technically, it has the little band, there's the rubber bands that you have to land your ball on. Consistently, it's just the right way. Your ball can need to slide off. People like football Vegas have just dropped off because of those big jumps and stuff. I mean, really, things have just really changed the landscape and. I personally think that Slingshot is a really tough obstacle, and I I would personally give it it's this reward if I were given the chance, but I wasn't did have a say in the actual one. I mean, we talked about it, yes, but it was also the way you come down to 
when all three of us were came then if we came to a mutual agreement or something. Yes, we just went the one up was falling shelves. The reason why this was the one up personally for me, it was because of the fact that you no, know, it took out a wide range of people. And it has some of the most shocking fails on it. We got Jesse Graff, Chris Ganji, um, no, David White. Uh, you know, so many different people fell on it. And plenty of them we weren't expecting. Yeah, quite a few of them, actually. Yeah, and if it wasn't this, it was definitely Dragon Bath. Like, this took out so many different commanders. Like, I could name, like, 80 of them. <laughs> Not even that many minutes to the finals. I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, so that's why it's gets a winner up. And the winner is, once again, Corkscrew. How could anything else win? <laughs> yeah, Corkscrew did very well. It was a very good obstacle, and it took out a lot, a lot of people. Very much so. I think that's mostly because of two things. One, the spinning Corkscrews themselves, Zach took out a whole bunch. But then there was that four foot lache to the top. I mean, that took out a, a big majority, according to David, David Campbell. Campbell, Brian Quetch. I mean, uh, in Quetch. Um, Jesse Graff. All of these ninjas couldn't reach that. Couldn't reach either the last one or the second, to, or the second one. Just because of how high they needed to lache their hands. So much so that, you know, you don't get much distance with it. But also the fact that some people can't even shade that high just because it's such a big ask. Yeah, very much so. That's part, part of the reason why Cokes don't got so many knockout weights. Yeah, I personally feel like if the uh, the um, jump to the, to the next Cokes rule was lower, then obviously less people probably would have fell on it. <laughs> Yes, I see. I see you made that possibly. Boy, if if the thing was over, more people would have probably made it through it. So that gen would have been the cut off for both semifinals. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about one of my least favorite categories. It really shouldn't have to be here, but it is anyway. The stealthiest ninja category. This was for ninjas who got cut constantly throughout the season and were barely shown at all. And what's that called? So we have first up we have John Alexis Jr., we have Alex Nye, we have Kid Awadi, Seth Rogers, and Kevin Ball. So let's talk about each of these. First off, I want to mention Matisse Awadi. I put him here simply because I thought like he deserved more spotlight, but after talking out with you guys, I've decided that he shouldn't win the category because uh, as little screen time as he did, he did get a full one, which none of these people could even say they have. <laughs> no, at best these people have a fast forward. Yes, at best. Anyway, let's talk about everyone else here. We have Kevin Bull, who was fast forwarded twice. I only really got maybe 30 seconds of screen time at best. <laughs> at best, really. Basically, and that's why I put him here personally, but I can see why some of you guys may not think he deserves this um, to actually win the category, so I, I'll spare him this one, but you know. I don't think he does this one. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sucks when Kevin Bowe was demoted to being a part of the Selfies Ninja category. Yeah, it sucks because, you know, he's one of the biggest stars of the show. He's known for that Cannibal Alley thing when he went upside down. But now he's just being, you know, thrown, I guess, under the bus and completely being ignored. Yeah, even though, like, even though in the season, he would be one of those people who would get a story. But did it for whatever reason. Either that or got cut. Yeah, it getting cut is definitely a possibility as well. I'm not ruling that out, but I don't really see a reason why they would have cut it out if that was ever the case. Because I don't also think it would make sense to have Drew in there. Oh, definitely not. I mean, I don't think they live in the same area. No, because Kevin often competes in LA, where Drew often competes in Miami. Uh, Miami, so, you know, the Miami area, so, where we actually live, so, yeah. Basically, um, let's talk about, but, anyway, let's talk about, um, the actual winner of the category. Winner up was Alex Nye, I mean, mostly because 
of basically he got little screen time. I'm and I I think personally he deserved to be shown definitely. Yes, well, Seth Rogers, the knockout battle who we nominated, or didn't get shown probably because well time and um how well he did. Alex and totally deserved it. Yes, he should have deserved one of those stories. So well, you know, he struggled for years to get a buzzer, and the big story about it leads up to him getting a buzzer because that's what happened. And honestly, I think that would have personally worked out in the end, because like. Even he posted a easy video of his one. And I personally think, again, he's deserved to be shown on the show. And actually deserved to be shown hitting his buzzer. Even that fast forward segment, just something. But that never happened, said he was shown in the semifinals. I really don't get why they showed him in the semifinals instead of in the qualifiers. I mean, I think I would get it a little bit more if he was cut out in the semis and shown in the qualifiers, like, fully. Because in that case, at least then... You know, we see we see him, and you know we see is this ultimate achievement of his. When really, unless you go digging, you're not gonna find anything. <laughs> yeah, I, it makes me feel bad for the guy, cause again, he really deserves the spot. But let's move on to the actual winner, which was John Alexis Jr. A shocker, really. <laughs> In the grand schemes of the season, no. In the grand schemes of why was he not shown, yes. <laughs> Because the Giant, I really don't get why they would not have shown them. There's really no reason. Because like, they even shown people like Taylor Johnson and uh, Julius Ferguson who had drew on their team. I mean, if they can show that, then I think they could have shown Don Alexis at least once. Yeah, I mean, why? I don't get this at all. Yeah, at, least, at least give them fast forwards at this point. I mean, I really don't get this, but either way... He won the category, unfortunately. But anyway, we're gonna move on to that. Let's move on to the next category: best comeback story. This talks about people who may have fallen early last season, who did a lot better this season, or they had like an injury last season they had to come back from, or in the past, really. So let's talk about these nominees. We had Austin Gray, Sean Bryan, Najee Richardson, Jake Murray, and Jamie Wan. So, first up, I want to mention Jamie Wan. Jamie Wan, he got cut on his fit thumb. He did really well despite it. And that's personally why I put him here. But, <laughs> you two were kind of iffy on it. Very much so. Because, like, when we talk about nominees, I was really surprised you actually put him on there specifically. But, I, I, mean, I guess I can get it personally. I mean,. He had a shock of him in the foot in the season eleven. He also had injury to come back from, so I guess I can see your point there. But still, I was expecting I don't know something different. I mean, who would you have in mind if it wasn't going to be Jamie Wan? I don't know why I'm saying this, but maybe Jesse Graff. I don't know. Yeah, that's actually a good point, actually, because no women got nominated outside their categories. Oh crap! You're right. Yeah. Sorry guys, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? Anyway, um, yeah. So Jamie Wan, he personally was my pick, but you know him not being put here, I'm not surprised. Anyway, let's talk about Jake Murray. Jake Murray, he did super duper well this season, making all the way to the top playoffs, getting number one spot in all of his um. Uh, all of his course ones. Personally, I think he deserves the winner one of this category, but I can get why certain people aren't okay with it. Um, and I can get why certain people were like, mm, really? Alright, so, yeah. So, I personally think he would have deserved the win, personally, but these two really kind of put him under the bus, I guess I'll say. Well, the other two we haven't mentioned yet. Seem like they made more sense. Yeah. I get what you mean, but so for up to me personally, I had no friends who really helped me decide on these. It would have been Jake Murray. But anyway, let's move on. We have the final three Sean Bryan, Austin Gray, and Najee Richardson. Let's look at Austin Gray real quick. Quick. Oh, yeah, I know. I know Austin Gray made all the way to the finals, all the way to the one up position in the actual one. And the actual power tower playoffs. But I have to say, he lost this one. 
it kind of sucks, yes, but, you know, he did really well. I feel like he might have deserved it, but personally, I wasn't really tipped off by his story. I mean, it was barely even mentioned anyway, but still. Yeah, I felt a little attached to our actual one up up Sean Bryan than I did Austin Gray. And speaking of a one up Sean Bryan, let's talk about him. Sean Bryan had an injury in Season 11, making him have to leave the competition. And... He just ended up being a shock on its own. We see his recovery process in episode 3 at the qualifiers. And personally, that made me connect with him. Made me, I kind of felt bad for him. Even more than I did back in season 11 when he got the injury. Because, you know, he had the, he was doing the rehab process while COVID was going on. So, that it really did suck that he had to suffer through all that. But either way, you know, I'm glad he was even so able to compete despite the fact that he went out so early. Yeah, despite that. But anyway, let's move on to the actual winner of the category, Nancy Witteson. Yes, this was a tough one to decide, admittedly, but I put we put Najee as the winner. Mostly because no, Najee, he did really well, he had three buzzers, um since he had a lot of energy throughout the course and I kinda sad he's not competing next season, but you know, that probably means he is gonna be nominee for best comeback story for season fourteen, so there's that. I guess. But anyway, that's in the very far future. Yeah, with the next two years. But anyway. But yeah, so I put Naji Witson as a winner mostly because, well, we wasn't any with him in the story, and we really wanted him to go far, and he did go for, go really far, and did really well on all three courses, so, yeah. So let's talk about, um, the next one, which is the most shocking fail of the year. Yes, I made a video about this a while back, back when AEW up 12 first finished, but let's, we're going to talk about it together here. So we, our nominees were Joe Mawaski. Jesse Graff, or Joe Malosky in the finals, Jesse Graff in the finals, Tyler Gillette in the finals, Sean Bryan in the semis, and Kayla Bergstrom in the fi in the qualifiers. So, what's in the knockout? Um, we're going to knock out Sean Bryan first off. Really shocking fail. Personally, personally... Didn't really hurt me all too much. I mean, I felt like I was expecting to consider like a fast forward position from him. But, um, I know plenty of people who are just shocked. Courtney John. Yes. <laughs> Admittedly, this was like the most shocking fail of the year for me personally. I, I really was not expecting Sean Bryan to fail. I mean, even more than an actual winner, I think I was not expecting Sean Bryan to fail, but most certainly not. <laughs> I was expecting him to make it to the power tower players because how strong he is and stuff. Yeah, definitely speaking. So anyway, let's um talk about the other nominees. We've got Caleb Brooks from who I'm gonna knock out straight up knock out right now because well, personally I don't think it was that shocking, but it happened and a lot of and I feel like a lot of people would have scolded us if we didn't put it on here. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but that's really the only reason why we put him on here. Because, like, personally, there's the three of us. He really... I mean, it was it was a little bit shocking because of how he fell, but more off of, you know, of the fact that, you know, not having him in the finals is more of why it was shocking to us. But, you know, in terms of the great competitor himself, no, definitely not. No, he has plenty of seasons with with him, so including this upcoming one. If he's actually competing, so we do see him there. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Yeah, I bet he's gonna have a comeback story as well. We're talking about his shock and fail with him, maybe go maybe take it solo during the qualifiers. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And what's we want to our next nominee? Which is Jesse Graff. I know you think she might have scored one up at least, but nope, she's third place here. I don't third place here. Jesse Graff. I know she did well. I know this was probably one of the most shocking to many people here, but I don't personally think she deserves to win this category just because the fails of the other two people. I felt almost shocking in terms of the grand competitor as well as in the grand schemes of where they fell. But I was pretty shocked about Jesse Graff falling on the fifth on the third obstacle. And if she even injured herself while doing so, really does make me feel bad for her. So there's that. 
Uh, but there's also, you know, I'll want to walk. Lewis Tyler Gillette on spring forward. <laughs> yeah, this was a tough, very tough one to pick. Very tough. I was, it was really hard to pick this one, but in the grand scheme of things, I think he deserved it. Loved it. Um, Tyler Gillette, he um, had a big comeback. He had a big story about his cousin who is suffering from stage 4 periodic disease um, periodic syndrome I think it was called and um, had a big story about that he had finished the course in the semifinals and you know he was extensively shown this season and then he just fell very early on, this, on the second obstacle I mean this really sucked and this really did shock me personally Yes, it kind of sucked, but I can see everyone's point here. And while I didn't personally think he deserved one up, it was still very shocking considering the season. Yeah, considering how they highlight him, you never expected that. But let's talk about our winner, which is no doubt Joe Mawoski, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone had a doubt Joe Mawoski wouldn't win this category. Because freaking Joe Mulaski falls on the 8th obstacle. If he had cleared it, he would have moved on to the finals no matter what. So the fact that he fell early and met, uh, let Emil Malik slip by just makes this number one. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think you can actually change that. Impossible changing. But, um, yeah. Joe Mulaski won that category. And let's go over to the bit, two big ones for this one. We have... Female Ninja of the Year and Male Ninja of the Year. So, Female Ninja of the Year nominees were obviously Jesse the Black, Jesse Graff, Sandy Zipman, Joey DeLario, and decided to get the final spots to Ashley McConnell. So, let's go through them one by one. Starting off with Joey DeLario. Now, Joey, personally, I think she, she did really, really well for this season. I think she deserves this spot in the nominee position, but I don't personally think she deserves to win the category for obvious reasons. But I still wanted to mention her, obviously, because she did really well. She made all the finals. I mean, even if it was just because of a wild card position, because of Richard Goldstein's injury, still, it was still really good. Yeah, it is hard for the women competitors to work again, you know, even if there's a top two, there's still so many women competitors that. That is a big, you know, a big competing point. So it was mostly just because so many women got knocked out on both on, but Rubble and Clockwork, and she was one of only four ninjas to actually get past them. So it really didn't matter that she fell in slingshot in the finals. It was just that, you know, of the circumstances of the women who competed there. How well, yes, she didn't go that far, grand schemingly. She was the only one to actually make it past the two ninja killers. And I think that's the real reason why he, she moved on in the first place. Yeah, probably. But anyway, move on. So the next nominee I wanted to knock out was Ashley McConville. We thought of her mostly because well, she did it really well. She did a little bit of story and all that. But she didn't do as well as we could say. You know, deserve this spot. Give it to her. But, you know, I thought she always deserved the mention. Very much so. And let's talk about the other, the top three. So first off, let's talk about Slowly, the tie for one up. Yes, this was really, really, really hard to decide who we wanted for one up position. And really, I could, we couldn't decide, so we decided tie. You know what? So, Sadie Zimmerman and Jesse Graff, they are one ups. So they tied for second place. Because personally, despite um, Sadie Zimmerman technically doing slightly better than Graff, I couldn't really put her higher than Graff. Just cause, well, you know, Graf hit a buzzer, but Zimmerman made it farther slightly. And they both made it to the same part in the semis. I mean, it's really, they both deserve this one up spot. And I personally, none of us could really turn and agree on anything that didn't look all of them actually tying with each other. So, that's why that's happening. But let's move on to our... Winner, which is Jesse Flex the Black, obviously. Yeah, who else did you expect? I mean, really, she did really, really well. All the way to Power Out Boy after she completed the extended course. I mean, she did something that most male competitors couldn't even do. That's why this one was so impressive for her. 
Yes! Most definitely. I, I love her one personally. And it was my personal favorite one of the season. I I mean, I, I can't have that one leave my head. I personally can't. I remember being so shocked and so happy for her when watching that. That I personally can't have it leave my head. <laughs> so it's just stuck there. Yes, it's a constant memory that, you know, it was well, I was really happy for her. And I definitely think she deserves this nominee spot in this uh, award. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about the final category, the male ninja of the year. Yep, so I think you guys can obviously see the winner. No, but let's just go through everyone. So we got Daniel Gill, Adam Whale, Austin Gray, Jake Murray, and Amir Malik. So let's talk about everyone one by one. Starting off with Amir Malik. He was a rookie. He did really well, shockingly well than everyone else I was expected, but personally, I don't think he deserved a spot. Once again, he didn't do as well as everyone else. He got there by straight up chance, too, so that definitely weighed him down for me, personally. But everyone else here, like everyone else here, were like, he hasn't deserved this one. <laughs> no! I was just straight up like, no. Because when we met to discuss this last week, I was just like a straight up no. Yeah. Yeah, see, I see. I, I get what you mean. And I agree with you on that. Because I don't even think he should win that one. But, you know. I put him this because I felt like he should. Do, he should. He could have a chance at it. But, you know. There were other niche credits I would rather give it the spot. Speaking of which, let's talk about them. So, next up I want to knock out Jake Moe. Well, yes, he was knocked down in the power tower qualify in the first round of the power tower by Emil himself. Still, I feel like he deserves a nominee spot simply because, well, he did super duper well in the season. He got number one all three times. No other ninja can say they got the fastest time every single night they competed. No, no ninja can say that. Definitely not. No, exactly. So the fact that that's how, the fact that that's how it turned out was probably why Jake Moore is on here and. Trying to make it up based off statistics, that's really the real reason, so, yeah. Anyway, we also have Adam Whale, third place. Yeah, this was very heartbreaking, but I personally can not really say that he deserved anything higher. Yeah, despite him doing really well this season, he didn't hit a buzzer in the qualifiers, and personally, he was barely featured, so I really didn't find a story that really resonated with me and him. So I couldn't really find a way to where we have um, him place any higher, but I did want to you know, have him as a nominee so because he did really well, and he put a really big effort in to try to get into the finals because his his race with Daniel Gill, oh man, that was close. <laughs> yes, it was really close, so kind of sucks that he didn't get in, but, you know, at least, you know, he deserved the mention, so that's why I'm going to give him out. Yep, so let's talk about our uh, one up Austin Gray and our winner, Daniel Gill. Yep. So the real reason why Austin Gray didn't win instead of Daniel Gill, well, you know, uh, Daniel Gill won the entire season, Austin did it. And also, Austin didn't, didn't get much spotlight despite the fact he was the one up. up. So, there wasn't really a story to really get into. I mean, I felt more engaged than the Naji, but than um, Adam, but still, there was barely anything here to really justify him being higher. Yeah, it was really only the fact that he got a course, a qualifying course clear instead of having Adam who didn't. But oh, that's the main reason why I think that's the main difference making between the two of them. And then you go obviously the AW12 champion. He was a champion. I don't think you can really make him not. The winner. I mean, if it's not April Fools, I would probably make a fake video saying Austin Gray won. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, but <laughs> maybe we will do that. <laughs> Put off the same five ninja wars till April 1st. Now, next year, we're actually all going to do them in a timely manner, unlike this year, so. I don't think it's going to work out like that for me. <laughs> but anyway, yes, Daniel Gyo. If you expect anyone else to win, then it I would I would commend it to you if it actually happened. But to the three of us, we really couldn't decide. We really could not have Daniel go in this category. Yeah, if he did, then it just would have not been right. I don't think so. 
Unfortunately, though, and that's gonna conclude this episode. So, what are we? Jeez! Wow. Okay. We were not. We were like forty-two minutes, so we gotta wrap this up. Oh wow, jeez. Yep, this is the longest episode in quite a while, but we. I guess we had a lot to say. But anyway, that's it for this episode. Of Enjoy your podcast. That's it for season twelve. Um, next week we'll be covering the women's championship, so that's gonna be exciting. But. Um, something I do want to mention real quick is that we were planning on covering it in this podcast, but overall we decided mutually just to keep it all in one. And we posted, and I personally think I'm glad we did that because this took way longer than I thought it would to cover. Yeah, because this is just like, this is the fraction of how long it took us to announce the nominees. Yeah, this is the fraction. The nominee episode was our shortest episode yet, only 15 minutes. And this one is at 42. So, really, how could you go along with this? I think, personally, this is a big enough episode for something, guys. So, uh, we'll leave it at this. Thank you for watching, everyone. Next time, come with the Women's Championship in an AW13. Hell yes! Whoa, this is so exciting! Oh, man. I didn't think we'd ever see more AW, more Ninja. I mean, we knew we knew everything was coming, but it's come so fast. Yeah, it certainly so, it feels like a week ago that we were five months away from uh, a new, a new episode, from an actual new episode.